Victoria comes out and tells us that there's girls pulling up in cars. One of them made out with him right out of the car. Like, yeah, it sucks. I'm definitely thrown off. I'm pissed off right now. Um, I don't like what's happening. I'm shocked. She's not welcome. She's not welcome. Hey, Hi. surprise. Today on Bachelor Party, Ugh, we have to talk about Victoria. I know I don't want to either, but alas, we have to. But happily, we've got some new gals to discuss and some pretty cool moments as well. So shall we? Let's batch. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. Week four of Matt. I feel like I've been living in Matt's world for much longer. There's a lot to cover today. And to do so, I am joined by Amelia Wedemeyer. Hello, Amelia. Hi, what's up? Oh my God, there's a lot to discuss. So we're going to actually go chronologically through the episode, which I don't always intend to do, but there was just like a lot of weird shit and a lot of bad shit that we're going to have to dig into. Looking at you, Victoria and MJ and And Anna. Anna. Oh, God. Uh, We'll talk about them. But I want to start on a positive note. I just want to start by talking about really praising, celebrating both Chelsea and Michelle. I think Mm. we've come to expect the worst of of the show (laughs) in many ways when it comes to like real life stuff and the really important issues at hand here in America. And, um, you know, Chelsea and Michelle both were brave enough to talk about real stuff affecting them. And For Chelsea, that was her talking to Matt about her hair, which I just thought was really moving. She talked about her decision to shave her head Mm -hmm. and what it's like for black women in relation to their hair and how it can be really sensitive. And I just was really um, grateful that she had that conversation on camera to educate people like me. And just because it is so real. Well, how did that strike you? Totally. I mean, it was really refreshing to see. And Chelsea is like absolutely stunningly gorgeous. I I was just like, God damn, she can pull off any look. Um, And yeah, it was it was just a a nice thing to focus on, you know, besides all the crazy drama. It was just like, this is nice. It also was just genuine. And when Jazzy Collins was on the was on the pod a few weeks ago, or I guess it was last month, we were going over all the women. She was really excited about Chelsea um, because mm-hmm. of partially because of her hair. And she was saying that, you know, she wanted to hear um, or wanted to see more women with different kinds of hair, more black women with different kinds of hair on yeah. the show. And I was thinking about Jazzy as I watched this and I was like, this is exactly the kind of thing that she's talking about. That's like so necessary and relevant. Um, and it was just cool that this actually happened. Yeah, so you're saying they listen to the podcast and they're like, <laughs> no, 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 yes. no. I don't I'm know. Saying ja- I'm saying Jazzy saying- is an expert <laughs> she in, is, yeah. <laughs> in reality TV and she was right. I will also say I obviously am just a white woman, but I had like a hair issue of my own when I, like a few years ago with my hair falling out. And Chelsea is like so right. Like it's like, it is a really intense personal thing. That's sure. like, and just like, your relationship to your hair is like, I think until you have like some kind of crisis with it, you don't really understand. It's pretty intense. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, can't really speak to any of that, but I definitely sympathize. And I and I can't even imagine what it would be like for me to lose my hair or to, you know, decide to shave it off. 
It's, yeah. it's like a security blanket. Totally. And I, yeah. And, and just everything she was saying about, um, how she didn't want to go outside unless it was straight. It was just really moving. And Chelsea, mm-hmm. thank you for sharing. That's just really what I wanted to say. Yeah. And Michelle, similarly, she's a Minnesotan like you. Love Michelle. I freaking love Michelle. I do too. We're going to come back to her. But Michelle uh, is a teacher in the Minneapolis area. And she talked about how hard that was during the protests following the killing of George Floyd. And yeah. Michelle, thank you for bringing this conversation to national television. It's so vital. Totally. And also just like teachers, man, they have it. I can't imagine what it would be like to be a teacher. I mean, I get exhausted from doing one podcast. I can't imagine what it's like to have to deal with a bunch of children. Especially when there's like this major world event happening in your area. Like, you know, um, the protests following the death of George Floyd were obviously national news, but it was clearly so personal and obviously local for people in Minnesota. And so I can't even imagine what that was like with, she's an elementary school teacher right. and also feeling responsibility to the parents. That's like a lot. Um, not to mention just being a human affected by these yeah. things. Oh, totally. And I think, you know, and not only that, it's like you have that and then the pandemic and everyone it's, you know, they were probably doing distance learning and yeah. that makes it so much harder as well. I know. You know, how do you and, explain it to how do you explain police brutality to kids over Zoom? I mean, I don't even know. I don't know either. And I have a really good friend who actually, I think, works in the same school district because it seems not that I've like done some stalking of Michelle, but... Um, <laughs> That's what we do here. It's fine. If you right, talk to her, no but big But deal. I have. Yeah. And apparently she teaches at uh, in this Bloomington school district, which Bloomington is just a suburb of Minneapolis. That's where like the Mall of America is. And um, <laughs> my good friend from high school also is a teacher in uh, that district. And just listening to all the stuff that she faces and deals with it's just like a like I just commend her and I commend Michelle for being just outstanding people you know it's just yeah absolutely Michelle's date seemed pretty fun I was into yeah meet hot air balloon yeah I mean it's kind of scary but yeah we'll talk more about her hot air balloon definitely scary but I was I was into (laughs) it she got lucky um anyway Michelle thank you for you thank you for being on the show and for sharing as well and I just thought like this this episode was like fucking weird and so yeah. much negativity that I just wanted to start by celebrating the two of them and like the fact that they pushed the discourse forward and contributed and without being even close to the like really mean women that we got this week. More on them. Can we talk about Dale and Claire for a second? Of course. Do you have you taken a side? Have you bought a t-shirt? Team Dale, Team Claire? <laughs> um, I feel like I, I think it's if it seems to me that Dale posted this statement without consulting Claire and That's saying correct. it was from both of them, which is messed up. No, he deleted it. And then I think reposted right. it with a signature. Oh. oh, oh, wow. Like a signature is really going to help us like decipher that it's from him. I don't. OK, well, whatever. I I, I just I feel bad because I, I, I genuinely think she wants to be in love so bad. Me too. And so I feel bad for her in that respect. But at the same time, I feel bad for Dale because they pretty much pressured him into being engaged after two weeks. All the signs were right there on Dale's face. I mean, <laughs> I I feel so sad for Claire. Like, it's not even like really a sides, but I agree with you. Like, Claire just really wants to find love. It's why she's yeah. on the show so many times. Totally. She seems like she knows what she wants, but she doesn't know how to get it. It's, re- it's honestly just I find incredibly sad. So I'm sending my best to Claire. I wish her well. Also, maybe don't look for love on a reality TV show that has not worked out for you several times. I know. I know. It's just and so sad. I know, And I hope she realizes this because she seems like a nice enough person. I don't I don't I can't really judge her because we've only gotten, you know, so many episodes of her. But she seems nice enough and she clearly really wants to be in love and she just doesn't know how to find it in this universe. And it's like, Claire, you've been looking for nearly what, 10 years? And if you it's a long time. It, it's it, almost, it's a long time. Yeah. And if you can't find it here, you're probably not going to find, if they give you an entire season and you didn't find it, like, look on like eHarmony or something, you know? All of the signs that Dale showed, I like, I just wanted to be wrong. The number one sign for sure was when he, um, when, they, when she was saying they wanted to have, she wanted to have children really quickly oh. on like their mid season after the final rose. And he just like, his face just went like, gaunt like his jaw dropped and he was just like clearly 
No, he was. He's not ready. And that's OK. He doesn't have exactly. to be ready. But like, that's very clearly the terms of Claire's relationship is like what she's looking for. And I don't blame her. She's totally. 39. The clock does tick. It and does. It's it's totally fine. It's just very clear that he was not into that. Um, yeah, they're on two also, separate pages. Yeah. Also, remember when they were like, OK, you're going to propose now. He clearly oh was like really overwhelmed. And uh, yes, he was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> The signs were all there. Poor Claire, though. When do you think they broke up? Danny Pellegrino had a good theory. I don't know if you saw this. No. What did he? They were say? supposed to be on his podcast together in November, Ooh. and then and then they backed oh. out. So he thinks it might have been sometime in November. But really, I don't. I recall them celebrating the holidays together, if I recall correctly, via Instagram. Well, and someone I don't remember where I heard this, but it was one of the theories that have been like floated in Bachelor Reddit and whatnot, and it was. She was visiting him recently, I think like over New Year's or something in South Dakota, and they were hanging out with his cousin. And yeah. then suddenly she unfollowed the cousin and the un- the cousin unfollowed her on Instagram. And then the cousin posted something to the cousin's um, Instagram stories that was mm-hmm. like, got to get rid of the trash. It wasn't like got to get rid of the trash, but it was something to that effect that was like, oh, bad people, you know. So I don't know. Maybe something happened in South Dakota. Brutal. Poor Claire. I was listening to Dale's podcast from 2018 this morning. He did an episode with his trainer, who is Kenny Santucci, who you might know is Mr. Beautiful from the challenge. Right. Kenny is banned from the challenge. So he's just a a trainer now in New York. And also like one of Dale's really close friends, I guess. Hmm. And um, I wanted to believe that Dale was not just in it for the fame. But um, But he had a podcast about working out and he's got a whole website. And he. unfortunately I think Dale's Dale is just what you would expect from this very attractive former athlete living in New York, who also is a model. <laughs> the signs were all there. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Truly. When someone tells you who they are, believe it. Believe them. <laughs> Exactly. Well, and I know that you're not the, you know, biggest Dumois fan. And mm-hmm. honestly, neither am I. I've recently kind of weaned off. But uh, there were postings about him, like, I know. like kissing and flirting other w- with other women. I know, and for months. like, ooh, yikes. So, I, I don't know. know. I was I really know. hoping that wasn't true. <sighs> I don't know, man. And yet, I think it is. Yeah, yet here we are. <laughs> Claire yes, and no. Dale, I wish you both the best of luck separately. Michelle Money sent her... um Oh, S- some candles to help her get over it. Oh, I don't know, nice. Claire. I think this is really the best. Dale's not ready to have kids. So like, right. you know, what are you supposed to do? I mean, right. It's when she was like, real life babies. Problem. This happens a lot in relationships. Totally. And we're watching it play out right yeah. before our eyes. Pretty exciting stuff. Good luck, everyone. I honestly also, I just want to acknowledge I was so wrong. I was like, Claire and, and Dale are going to last longer than Zach and Tasha. And I could not have been wow. more wrong. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You win some, you lose some, you know? Seriously. Zach and Tasha, stay together. We all need it. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about today's episode. I have to say one of my least favorite episodes in a really long time. Yeah, there was a lot of things happened and they were just not that it was not that fun. It was also just super weird. There's a lot of continuity problems, which which is one of the reasons why I want to go over this (laughs) chronologically, because I just kept being like, wait, what? And (laughs) We had to do like a like a little team check in, you, me, and Kaya. Like, where did this episode even end? Because I was just like, it's hard to differentiate between time. One thing right. that I'm genuinely shocked by, and Kevin O'Connor and I discussed this, is how much we miss the travel. And I'm realizing that the travel not only is like functional in terms of like adding some level of drama, it demarcates time. It's like very hard to like tell where you are in this like the course of the narrative arc of the season. That's so true. Because it just looks the same. It's like, we don't get the difference between, I don't know, like London and Spain or wherever they go. Right. And it's also like, I feel like I used it as like to mark time to be like, well, this girl made it out of the country or like, you know, this girl made it to the exotic locations almost as a, you know, marker of how far someone goes. So yeah, I totally agree. It just, um, it's been kind of weird, but so let's just pick up where we left off. Sarah, (laughs) Left. Sarah right. Trot, I believe is her name. She's oh, out. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, Sad. The photos of her and GEZ will live on in infamy. <laughs> she does kind of look like Ashley Benson. A little bit. She's got an, an Ashley yeah. Benzo style. Yeah, I see it. She got the vibe. 
He has a type, I guess, yeah. maybe. You know. Don't we all? <laughs> um, so she's out. Everyone seems so convinced she'd be coming back, but this episode cl- like, mm. really closed the window on that. She will not be returning. No, definitely not. <laughs> no. no. she li- Literally, her dad is dying. Like, she needs to be with him. Yeah, seriously. Best of luck to that family. Yeah. And, then, and then after that, Matt's wearing his cool jacket, the buffalo plaid that we all love, including Tyler, right. who said he wanted it. Oh, God. Um, And then it goes into the end of the group date and we didn't see the group date. So it's just like this weird (laughs) cocktail party that we have no idea what happened during the day. At what point did you realize we didn't get to see that date? Because I had I did a couple of like double takes with myself and like talking to myself like what happened on this day? I honestly it didn't it didn't occur to me until you told me like, oh, Chelsea won the group date rose. And I was like, wait. Oh my God, you're so right. We got half of a date and then two other like full dates. Yeah. And kind of, we didn't even get two other full dates because the That's episode true. ended right. with Katie talking to Matt during this, the cocktail party. But I just want to say like justice for Chelsea because we had a great Chelsea yeah. moment, but mm-hmm. everyone's wanted to see more Chelsea. That's been a major chatter because she's like stunning and they do a lot of like cutting to her face where she's like agreeing when they're sitting <laughs> yeah. around in like the living room or the lobby, whatever it is, in Emma Colon. But we don't really, we until tonight, we didn't know much about Chelsea and we still don't know a ton. We have this right. awesome story that she shared, but I feel like we were deprived of some Chelsea time because we didn't get to see this actual date. Totally. I, I know. Well, also it's just like, I would like to see what you guys did. I don't know. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. How'd you guys spend your day? Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. It really is super weird. I don't get it. Like, was it boring? Did something so. egregious happen? It probably was well, just boring. It had no well, bearing on the, on the plot. I guess, but you could argue Ben's whole date was boring. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I know. And then meanwhile, while this was happening, the other thing that was going on was Katie versus Victoria. Oh, God. And this was kind of like going back and forth between the A plot and the B plot. The B plot was obviously the day. The A plot was Katie versus Victoria. <laughs> um, I wrote down some of the things Victoria said. Oh, yes. First of, first of all, Katie, we just love Katie in these parts. She's she's a hero. <sighs> I mean, is there a better person on this season? No. I don't think so. Me neither. <laughs> Katie has a conscious. Uh, not only does she does she stick up for people, but she's like very much like I am trying to do what's right. And so when Sarah left, Victoria's response was the trash <laughs> took itself out. It's just like that is so mean. And like that's Sarah, really mean. It's just like I don't know. I I I find zero fun in Victoria. Like when she talks, it hurts my ears. I know it's like a mean thing to say about about anyone's no. voice, but no, like, it's, it's true. Awful. It's awful. And also not only that, she's saying awful things too. So it's just like, I don't want to hear this. Like, you know what? I would agree if you were saying that about yourself, Victoria, because you're actually an awful person. Sarah, you know, she made some mistakes, but she didn't strike me as a malicious person. No. But Victoria, you strike me as a malicious person. If Victoria left, that would be the trash taking itself out. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and we know she's a bad person because she shoplifted. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Her mugshot has just come out. Yes. And honestly, I think she looks better as a blonde. Really? Hot take. Yeah, I was talking to Kate Halwell about this. And what Kate said something like, you know, she looks chaotic both ways, but she actually looks like interesting chaotic. Whereas like, you know, this brown hair is kind of boring yet chaotic, if that Mm. makes sense. Yes, it does. Interesting. I hadn't really thought about that, but now I'm going to. Yeah, she kind of looks more of like a bad girl, like badass, because it's like you know this blonde color Spring on you. Break, yeah, yeah like it's vibe. like <laughs> yeah, and it's like you know what this color does nothing for you, but the fact that you're willing to try it out and you want to be blonde, that's dangerous, and I kind of like that. Interesting. Okay, so you yeah. you prefer her as a blonde petty thief than as a <laughs> mean brunette on The Bachelor? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I just, um, Victoria does something that is, I think, really common in politics among people like Josh Hawley, where she'll be like fighting for her right to free speech, where she's like, I'm not done expressing myself. And if I want to express myself by calling people names, I can, and I will. And wild. It's just like, that's not how it works. And, and Katie rightfully was like, there's a difference between expressing yourself and calling people names. And I like how Katie made it as basic as possible. She's the <laughs> one who really like made this dichotomy between like basically 
you know, what you would say to like a, a toddler being like, there's a difference yes. between like, someone in kindergarten. They're like getting time out. There's a difference between expressing yourself and calling people names. Really well said, Katie. And this just basic idea is like, tries to be inverted and used against you by people like Victoria. And it really made me mad. Totally. Well, and also I think Victoria really thought she could bully Katie into giving yeah. her an apology, like kind of how she did with Marilyn. And, uh, and Katie and she, wouldn't do it. I loved it. Katie, she said, she said you're not getting an apology. I, and instead she got a tongue lashing and it was just iconic. I was, was like, iconic. hell yes. Oh my God. I just, I really think Victoria thought that she was going to get an apology. And then her face when she realized that she wouldn't be getting it was just, oh, mwah, beautiful. Also, I'm fairly certain this sit down happened because a producer told Victoria to do it. <laughs> Clearly Victoria initiated it yeah. and she will, I obviously will do anything to be on camera. And she mm-hmm. just seemed like she was having a great time. I, I have a lot of questions about Victoria's choices though. Like she just has some of the worst fashion I've ever seen on this show, but she's yes. obviously trying really hard. Yes. Yeah. She like, you know, those, um, those dresses that are from like, you know, uh, cool Australian brands yeah. and they're like poofy. From Revolve or something. Yes. Yes. And, but it's like, you're not even wearing the correct bra. Like, what are you doing? I know it's, it's really rough uh, on the same fashion note. I thought Katie looked really really pretty when she was talking to Victoria and her white cropped tee and the jeans. Yeah, she and looked Katie, great. Katie clearly should go casual. Formal wear is not her best look, and that's okay. Some people don't look great in formal wear. I just the red like, Katie, dress. Keep it cash. Yeah, the red dress was tragic. <laughs> Honestly, tragic. I agree. I'm so glad you brought that up because I was feeling the but same Katie, exact way. Yeah, but I, I I respect it. You know, just keep it cash. She's from she's from Washington. I feel like that's a great place to to thrive in casual clothes. Oh my god, yes, like beanies, some yeah, North like face, a cool yeah. Patagonia. Yeah, North love Face, exactly. That. Yeah, totally. She's she's got it rocking. God, um, okay, so then they go they f- go back to the end of the group date. Chelsea gets the rose as discussed. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think that. Anna thought she was going to get it though. Cause I believe Anna goes, gets the first chat with Matt. Oh, yes. 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 I yes, believe. Yes, yes. And this be- just began an episode of also hating Anna. Right. I mean, what was oh. the, what was the most annoying Anna moment to you? Well, I mean her calling some girl an escort. Oh, I forgot. She started the rumor. <laughs> well, I just want to say this is a pro Britney podcast because we don't know anything about Britney yet and we're not going to assume anything. And the fact that she's being slandered like this is like, crazy. It's crazy. And this is also like, this is a trope of reality TV. Did you watch a season of Southern charm with, with Ashley Jacobs? No, but my mom loves that show. Well, I can't, it's very, this past season was just reprehensible. Um, Nonetheless, a few seasons ago, Thomas Ravenel had a girlfriend who was also accused of being an escort. And she seemed like a significantly worse person than Brittany. But again, I don't know Brittany, <laughs> so she could be a bad person. I don't know, right. but it's just like a thing that happens on reality TV to like, to so just lame. shame and slander a woman. And it's like, it's pathetic. And it's like pathetic. for Anna to do that, it's just like insane. It's insane. And also, if you want to be an escort, like who cares? Like, why do we have to shame sex workers? We are not going to here. I've got some questions about how Anna got this info. Because Ooh, yes, was it fed to her mid show? Did she have a sense that Brittany could have been there um, beforehand? Like, I know someone was fed the line to say like, Chicago is like a small social scene. So like the people in the club scene know each other. And I believe they're like, she's not some regular bottle girl. And it's just like, that's like, a, that is a really paternalistic, dismissive and mean way to talk about someone. Even if you're not saying they're a sex worker to call them just a bottle girl. And listen, yeah. I've said it, we all have, but it's not something I'm proud of. Sure. Well, and it's like, you know, you're a grown now, you know, like maybe that was years ago or whatever. I don't know. It's just, it's something you're right. It's, it's like, we don't need to, turn to these reductive statements, you know, I don't know. And it's just like, also you're on national TV and you should know that you're on national TV and act like it. My God. Absolutely. It's just Anna sucks. That's one of the conclusions. I'm sorry, but the the mean girls, I just, I don't like them. And it makes it so unfun to watch and also to talk about, like, I'm not really that excited to talk about how much Anna, MJ and Victoria don't deserve to be on the show any further. Yeah. No, same. I know. It's like I would rather discuss some funny thing that happened or whatever, or, you know, like them boxing each other. I don't know. And we got so much of this ridiculousness. I don't know. I, I just like Brittany. This is 
probably has not been an easy evening for you. Probably a bad experience overall, unless she wins, which I doubt. Because uh, she's yeah, I don't think now been happening. painted as the escort. Um, but if she does win, great. I don't know. I just, I feel really bad for her. It's like very unfair. Well, I, it's wild to me that she didn't start crying because I would have started crying because mm. that, like, again, someone saying that is just in the society, not to be like in the society we live in, but in the society we live in, that's a damaging, that's a life ruining statement. And that's what Katie was saying when she went up to Matt. She was like, legitimately, this could ruin their lives. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now you're going to Google her. Actually, I did Google her full name. And one of the things that popped up, and this is even before tonight's episode, one of the things was that this girl might be an escort. She's being accused of being an escort. Like, what? I know. It's so fucked up. She's so young. It's not fair. She's so fair. And also, she's just really innocent in all this. And again, you know, it's like, that's her right. If she, I mean, the thing is, is like, She's not, but even if she was an escort, that's her right. And we shouldn't shame people for how they choose to live their life. Like, that's just, that, that's slut shaming. 100%. 100%. Brittany, we support you. Let's move on. Let's talk about the moment when these five women came in because it was also like, wow, just kind of, Rude. It, was, it was a lot. So it was. after Chelsea gets to the group date, they go into a cocktail party, a rose ceremony cocktail party, and Matt is sitting down with Victoria. <laughs> And Chris yeah. Harrison interrupts. I love that Chris and Matt then trotted through the entire hotel. So like everyone <laughs> yeah. saw them to be like, oh, where are Chris and Matt going? Are they going outside? What's going on? They covered all of the bases to make sure every single person saw them. Yeah, um, that was And great. then five women came in. And should we do a quick round of looking at their bios? Yes, definitely. Five oh gals. Goodness. We talked about Brittany. Let's talk about some other things related to her just to give her a little bit more life. Her name is Brittany Galvin. She's 23. She's a model from Chicago. Her bio says, Brittany is a sexy and sassy woman who's ready to take Mm. a different approach to her dating life. Single for the first time in a long time. What she said, she said she's always had a boyfriend. This serial monogamous is ready to break out of her Chicago bubble and experience love with a new type of man. Wow. She dreams of moving to New York City. A match for Peter Weber, perhaps? Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, he's moving back to Westlake Village like tomorrow. Her ideal man will be fun, mature, and trusting. I'm not sure that's Peter. She can't (laughs) be with a man who won't let her live her life and says she's no time for unnecessary drama. Even though she's only 23, if the right guy comes along, she's ready to get engaged. Mm. She says DJing a dance party in Ibiza is the top of her bucket list. She'd love to be invisible. I would as well if I had to be around (laughs) Victoria. And she dreamed of taking a hot air balloon ride in Cappadocia, Turkey. Wow. Um, She must have been real jealous when she was was on Michelle's date. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) She seems nice. I don't know. Basic. Cool. Good luck to you, Brittany. Right. I'm I'm loving this model slash DJ angle. I feel like that's that's a cool thing. Yeah. She should move to um Las Vegas. That's like the place for her. That's that's where those things collide. If you (laughs) ask me. Yeah. Agreed. (laughs) We also got Ryan 26, a dancer slash choreographer from Brooklyn. I love the Mm. name Ryan for a woman. Yeah. In her everyday life, Ryan strives to just be like Wonder Woman, a symbol of empowerment for women. Someone who pushes herself, has a good heart and cares about the well-being of all. That's Mm. very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, She's looking for a man with a kind heart who has more to talk about than just work. She well, I think it's okay to talk about work, but whatever. She loves that her mom pays extra attention to the little things and says a guy who can handle conflict with poise and grace is a huge turn on. That could be Matt. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I I think he likes avoiding conflict, but yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> okay, Ryan does not like to sit in silence for long periods of time. Her favorite flower is okay. a rose because it some comes in so many different colors, wow. and she loves all the Jurassic Park movies. <laughs> cool. I didn't see that coming. Same. I thought she would be like, I love Footloose or you know, some dancing movie. Footloose? Oh, because the dancing movie. You know, yeah. What's I your favorite know. dancing movie, Amelia? Oh my God. Mine's Dirty Dancing, obviously, but I have to say the ballroom dancing movie with Richard Gere. Really oh, wait, J-Lo? Yeah, j That movie is good. Okay, maybe that's my favorite <laughs> dancing movie. I really do that's like that That's a really that good movie. one. Also, the one with Antonio Banderas is really good with Yaya DaCosta from... Um, oh, my... From- ANTM. ANTM, exactly. Yes. That's a great movie. I don't know. I love I love dance movies. I watched Stomp the Yard over the weekend. I wish Ooh. Club is Short was not canceled. It's just like, oh. just great stuff. Yeah, I need to watch more. I mean, I like Silver Linings Playbook. That's kind of lame. <laughs> yeah, but, a dance you know. movie. Mm, you know. I like it. <laughs> okay, more. Pam, 28, ICU nurse from Los Angeles, California. Well, I mean, 
I mean, she got eliminated. So, I mean, this is the coldest thing I've ever heard of. I mean, <laughs> Kim is like on a respite from probably dealing with COVID in LA. Seriously. And she gets there. She has to quarantine. And then she's immediately eliminated. I mean, that is so cold. <laughs> That's pretty bad. That's pre- <laughs> Matt is like, that is just like fucked up, man. That's the meanest <laughs> thing he's done so far. At least yes. let her stay for one rose ceremony. Extend her stay. Like I can't believe that she didn't stay over Victoria, but whatever. No, I know. I, know. I mean, this is what her bio says. Kim is incredible. She works as an ICU <laughs> nurse in the number one heart surgery center. Wow. And after spending the last year fighting tirelessly on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, she is here to tend to her own heart. Oh, and Matt just crushed it. What the fuck? God. Uh- it's oh. so upsetting. Oh well, my God. And, and you know, she talked to him about this. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow, Matt. She, she tends to wear the pants in the relationship and needs a man who is confident and won't be intimidated by her professional success. Mm. Kim is truly looking for her equal counterpart to share her life with. She's here to focus on herself and hopefully return home with Matt James by her side. Well, this is so upsetting. It is. It is upsetting. <sighs> oh my god she dreams of meeting Beyonce and wants to cuddle with the baby polar bear oh, okay well hopefully do you she want can to do cuddle that. with the baby polar bear because I certainly don't I mean I, maybe I'd pet it but I'd rather cuddle with like a koala or something you know <sighs> sure this episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, It means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Okay, let's talk about Catalina and then we'll talk about Michelle. Catalina... Also, it was a former Miss Puerto Rico. And I believe so is Mari, by the way. Oh, interesting. Okay. Catalina is a woman of the world. She was born in South America, raised in a small Caribbean island, and has lived in New York City. She says that these varied locations have given her appreciation for humanity on a global level. She admits she probably has watched one too many rom-coms in her life. Me too, except more than one, several. <laughs> she says she's here to find her Prince Charming. She wants a tall man who will never say no to the adventure of the day. Although she doesn't want to have kids tomorrow, family is incredibly important to her and says that a man doesn't want to have children of their own is an absolute deal breaker. She's terrified of blood, both real and fake. She loves mm. to dance and says her favorite types are salsa and merengue. And she doesn't understand why anyone would want to go to the gym for a date. Catalina, a fucking men. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> My least favorite Victoria moment, the moment I absolutely hated her the most and wanted to jump into my television and punch her was when she took the crown off of Catalina's head. And then that? when she didn't even wear it herself, she put it on the table and said, oh, it back to her. That I was wild. was furious. Beyond furious. I was so angry. I, I just can't believe she did that. I mean, wow. To invade a, someone's personal space like that, that is just... Not okay. Oh my that God. Like, so messed up. It is messed up. And I, I can't believe she did that. Me neither. I cannot believe it happened. It's like really just like wrong. She's a bad person. I really hate Victoria. I'm going to be honest. I think we all think she's headed to paradise, right? If she's there, I'm going to have a hard time watching. Would you watch if it was like Victoria versus the uh, Victoria Fuller? Remember her? She's also a bad person. Unfortunately, I picked Victoria Fuller in this case, <laughs> in this situation. I think there should be like a two on one date with some guy and both of the Victorias. Here's the thing about Victoria Fuller. The other women like her. Like, Ugh, I think gross. that... I'm sorry. I, I don't must like count her. for something. I get... But it seems like the women kind of like this Victoria, too. Ugh, you're right. 
I don't know. I just, I hate this Victoria queen. I hate her. It's really upsetting. It's really upsetting. And she's not a good person. (laughs) Can I ask for your opinion on something? Yes. Victoria introduces herself as Victoria, like the queen. Yeah. When I have to give my name at like a restaurant or like an order over the phone, I say Juliet, like Romeo and I'm like Juliet, like Romeo and is that as annoying as Victoria saying Victoria, like the queen? I don't think so because Juliet is um, like, I feel like Victoria is a better known name than Juliet is. It's a more popular name than Juliet. Yeah. I don't and want people to think I'm saying Julia or Julie is usually and, the and situation. See, that's, a, that's another thing. I, I have had to deal with that my entire life with like Emily and Amanda. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't want to be that. confused for other names. That's why I say Juliet like Romeo and plus people remember you that way. It's like you give them a little something, you know? Right. Well, and I am not going to lie to you. Do you know how many times I've gotten on our social media? They call you Julia. They really do sometimes. I and I'm like, that. and That's I'm like, not my name. I know. And I'm like, I mean, I don't say anything, but I'm just like, do you even listen to the podcast? What's going on here? Okay. But well, that makes me feel better because I appreciate this feedback because as I was watching her say Victoria like the queen, I was just like, shit, do I need to stop saying Juliet like Romeo and? No, no. Like you have a <laughs> legitimate reason to. She does. Like when she said Victoria like the queen, I had to think about it for a second. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. She so doesn't look like a Victoria. Like what should her name be? I don't even know. Drusilla. <laughs> she, she's like the epitome of one of um, Cinderella's evil stepsisters. Yeah, Drusilla. Yeah. She sucks. She, she just sucks suck. so hard. She's I can't such believe a she did it to person. Catalina. She fucking yeah. sucks. She's horrible. <laughs> Last new girl. By the way, this this division of the OGs versus the new people. Oh my god. What is this, Teen Mom? I mean, come on. <laughs> I just was like, I don't know. I also like really hate MJ. I really do. You know what? I don't like her either. And I started not liking her at the beginning of last week because of the way she treated Sarah. And yeah, she also has this like fantastical idea in her mind that she somehow is meant to be with Matt. I mean, I guess you kind of have to have that. But it's just like, girl, you're not even getting to final four. At least I don't think so. I totally agree. I don't think so. Also, she must have shared something with Matt because we did see her ask, like, how are you doing? And he was really happy that she did that. But then yeah. when he declined to give her the rose, he did mention, and MJ, thanks for sharing what you shared or something like that, and didn't give her the rose. So she shared something, but if we didn't see it, it obviously A, it was boring, and B, she doesn't stick around long enough for it to matter. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we shouldn't care. And she's also just a mean person. She's, she's, also, she's part of the Mean Girl Brigade. I can't totally. stand it. It's, it's I can't so stand it. And the whole OG thing, again, is just like, okay, wow, because you guys have been like here for three weeks longer, even though it could have been any one of you. Yeah. yeah. Any one of you who has, um, who could have been selected to be part of the New Girl Brigade. It right. Literally could have been anyone, but they had to choose five random ones. So, so bizarre. Whatever. So four of the five make it through this cocktail party. Poor Kim. That's just like, I know. So harsh. Come I hope on. she finds love. I hope she gets invited to paradise. Give her Me that. Me too. She deserves it. Seriously. She deserves it. I've gone back around and thinking about like who I do and don't want to go to paradise. Obviously, I was very vocal about not wanting Dr. Joe and Ivan to go. Yeah. But like, oh, well, Ivan, I'm mixed on, but obviously Dr. Joe is like, please don't go. I feel like I, I'm, I've been assessing some of my own sexism because as I've been watching this show, I'm just like, I don't feel as strongly about these women going or not going based on if I respect them or not. And Interesting. I get that. Because I, because when Kim left, I was like, oh, I just want her to like have a fun time. Hope she finds love in paradise. <laughs> yeah. But like, why don't I respect her career as much as I respect someone like Dr. Joe? And I was just thinking about this and mm-hmm. I, just, I haven't reached any conclusions, but I've been considering it about like why we do or don't want people to go to Bachelor in Paradise. Well, and I think it's also different because I feel like as women, sometimes you can see yourself being like, well, I could date that person. Like, I, I yeah, mean, of I course, of so course, normal, that factors you know? into it. I mean, I, that's why the Bachelorette's more fun. I'm like, ooh, right. Zach. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Except I will say this. I think Ivan, he wants to stay in the reality TV universe, which is fine. Like, do it. But like, you know, it's just it's so obvious to me that he's like, oh, OK, you know. Claire and Tasha's men seem to have an interest in the spotlight in a way I don't think we've actually seen from a whole cast <laughs> of, of Bachelorette contestants before. I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, like, no, I agree. I mean, there's some that really went for it. Like Jason and Blake 
clearly loved being in the mix after their show. Like that was very obvious. Real wait, Jason, you think? Jason Tardick? Oh, oh, J- oh, 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 sorry. I thought you were talking about Jason, the Jason who Mesnick? went on, No, 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 who went on who was on oh, Claire's Claire season? Yeah. Yeah. No, not him. He's like off the I hope Cleric should call him. He's like off the <laughs> Yes, agreed. Didn't you and Kevin talk about that? Was that the Yeah, one? we did. Okay, we yeah, did. yeah. I I I I totally agree. I think I think they would actually be very good together. But I whatever. do too. They're both intense. And he's, as everyone told me, he's very loyal. But yeah, like when I see like Ivan and Damar doing their Instagram lives. Oh, I Bennett, love Damar, but yeah. I like Damar too. But there is something charming about Damar to it. Like it just seems like this could be like a future for Damar. You're like, okay, maybe you should be a host. Plus he's kind of yeah. a performer. Being a spin instructor is actually like a type of performance. I would love to see Damar as like one of the Peloton. Yeah, let's make people. him a Peloton celeb. <laughs> I honestly, because now I guess that is a thing. I'm like, should I get a Peloton just to keep up with these trainers? Like, oh my God. Because I saw on page six, now they're following these Peloton trainers. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel out of the loop. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just like, a, I, I'd like for him, I don't know. Just, I feel like this could be like a, a springboard to like a Rachel Lindsay type of career where it's like maybe he's making a change and he should be a broadcaster or an entertainer. Honestly, I think he should be a Peloton guy. And I'm sorry to say this, and I know everyone loves Ivan and I have no ill will towards Ivan, but I just find Damar a thousand times more interesting than I think Ivan he's is so boring. More, he's got more of that host charisma. Like maybe Damar <sighs> yes. should, should follow up Chris Harrison when fa- Chris Harrison finally steps away. I be I like him way more than Wes. Oh my, I, <laughs> Wes on this, I was like, Wells? get him Wells, oh my! See, I don't even care because I don't <laughs> like him. Wells is next week, I think, right? Oh, no, he's on this episode. With he was. The, oh yeah. yeah, remember the announcer? Because Chris was like, "He's a Golden Gloves." Cha-. I was like, "Don't spread that false information, Chris." Okay, let's move on to the um to the squirrel date. Actually, oh wait, we'll we have back. to talk about Michelle. Yeah, we'll come back to Michelle, but okay, just really okay. quickly on the squirrel yes. date. The iconic I, squirrel date. <laughs> I have like I have like blindness for the squirrel date. I was like, did I miss Ben? And then I I forgot that Wells was a part of it. I'm just like, wait, what? No, like Wells the, was a part of the boxing date. Oh, the boxing date. Sorry, I conflated the two. You're right. No My bad. They both were boring. I they were know, both super dates. boring. Yeah. And honestly, you know, I was talking to producer Kaya right before this, and she said, you know, it would have been more interesting if they had the new girls on the boxing date. And I totally I agree. I know. Why didn't they? Huge miss. I don't know. It's just stupid. Honestly. Would you rather be on the boxing date or the squirrel date? Oh my God. Well, honestly, kind of the boxing date because I feel like I would have been Maggie struggling in that giant pumpkin. (laughs) Okay. The giant pumpkin when they were doing like the rafting or whatever. Yes. um, My main thought was like, that's really cold. Because if you fell out, it's fucking October, November and some body of water. That would have been freezing. I was really glad. And I probably would have fallen out. One time when I was 13, I went whitewater rafting and I fell out of the boat like before we even got in the boat. Like, I just like fell into the river as we were like putting the boat into the water. That's horrible. <laughs> I oh my know. God. I would have fallen out of that that stupid pumpkin raft. It just seemed really that it just seemed really hard and not really thought through. Well, yeah, they were just like, well, we have nothing else to do. So let's just do that. I was like, OK, I don't know. Oh, God. OK, we'll come back to the back of the day in a second. But you're right. Let's talk about Michelle. So Michelle gets the one on one this week. And they have a pretty cool date. They go zip lining, which mm-hmm. is, I love a zip line. I mean, just <laughs> so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Also, really passive activity, but like a fun one. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. I've never been, but it, it looks fantastic. And then they go in this hot air balloon, which is, you know, her fellow contestants' dream. So she crushed it. <laughs> well, I would love to go in a hot air balloon. I think the only, my only question is where do the cameras go? And like, is there a cameraman in the basket with them? If great so, question. that's a negative. But if it's just the two of you, that's a great way. It looks like cameras like around. That's a great way to get some time together. I feel like it was probably the latter, you know, just because there's not so. a lot of room. Yeah, I, I don't know. So. And it seemed like they had a really good connection. Oh, my God. So good. Holy yeah. crap. Like she she had a quote and he was like, Maya Angelou. And she was I like, know. yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Also connecting over like, to, you know, working with kids at, in at yes. risk communities like that was really sweet. Love that. I have to say, I don't know if Matt is the most entertaining TV character I've ever seen, but he does seem like a really good guy. Totally. Yeah. I mean, kind of boring, but nice guy. And honestly, I would rather have nice and boring than mean and exciting like Victoria. Oh, yeah, of course. I guess, or know? even like indecisive and like sweaty like Peter. <laughs> I just think it's such an upgrade Never for Peter. Forget. 
even if that was like better television or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I thought their relationship was just like really sweet from the jump. Like they clearly had a lot in common. It kind of reminded me a little bit of when he first met Kayla and they were like bonding over mm. the North Carolina connection and the sweet tea. Yeah. But he didn't seem into Kayla, but he does seem really yeah. into Michelle. Oh, so into Michelle. Just like the way they were looking at each other. It was so obvious to me. They both said like, on three, how many kids do you want? And they, you know, both said three. And it was just, I, there were just all these little moments that I'm like thinking back to being like, wow, they really had a lot of chemistry going on. So they really did. And um, she uh, also was like, Matt's really tall and she was didn't seem like a mini me next to him, which I just thought was no, notable. No, yeah. Because so many of these women do. And then it turned out she played basketball in college at Bradley University. So yes. she's five foot nine. So she's tall. I feel like that's also great for Matt. Totally. I know. I love it. I I just love her. I think she's great. I also dare I say she seemed like the most normal contestant, like just like a normal <laughs> human that you might encounter in the world. Yes. one hundred, Just like a nice, like lovely teacher, you know? Yeah. Because that's, yeah, exactly. that's who she is. A teacher from Minnesota, despite Anna being from Minnesota. I know. I would say 95% of Minnesotans are good. <laughs> Thank you. You're no, welcome. I totally will. And, and she and, continues this trend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and Michelle, it seems like she is from the Twin Cities area, whereas Anna, she's she's from like an hour outside of the Twin Cities mm. in a place called Owatonna. And Tell us so, more, Amelia. Well, actually, I asked my dad because I knew I was going to be on this podcast. And I was like, what do you know about people from Owatonna? And my dad was like, well, interesting. A lot of creative people, a lot of people because he, well, I guess technically still does work in advertising, but he did work in advertising. And some of the people he worked with at his company were from Owatonna. Mm. Interestingly, Anna is also, uh, she's a copywriter. In advertising. Yeah, yeah. copywriter. Cool. So, you know, but other than that, she sucks. So, yeah, I don't. I can't. That's <laughs> she all really I can does. say. <laughs> she yeah. really does. But Michelle does not. She continues the trend of great Minnesotans. We're just going to ignore Anna. We don't care about her. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, they had, they had a great date. Also, one thing that I I knew was kind of in the mix, just like '90s style being back. But Michelle's look was so '90s as well, with like the <laughs> black jeans and the very spaghetti uh, thin spaghetti strap top. Yes. It was basically a tube top that just like happened to have some string attached. <laughs> yeah, too- <laughs> she rocked right. it. She looked great. She did. I have so she many questions did. with the temperature, though. Like, are they like sometimes it looks really cold. Then they're just right. wearing very little clothing. I don't know. Confusing. I don't know either. That is actually a good point. I have not been to Pennsylvania in the fall, so I don't know. But anyway, Michelle, I'm happy you're here. Seems like she's got the best shot. I mean, Brittany, how can she go far? Even though she, she might deserve <sighs> to. I just feel like she's been so slandered. Defamed. I know. It's just I mean, like when I say what Anna did is disgusting. I tr- like I don't think there's any been anything as disgusting as what was done to Britney on this show ever. I really believe that. I mean, it is just it's terrible. And it just how became, do you like, come the back from that point of the whole yeah. episode? And how does Anna not know there's anything wrong with that? Uh, I don't know if she fell into the producer trap of just you know, being on a roll of like hating this girl or what? I mean, she tries to make it seem like I'm doing this to make sure your intentions are pure. But like, that's not true. She's not doing it because of that. She's jealous and she wants to get rid of this girl. Like, it's so clear. It's so clear because there's a clear division between, I hate to call them the OGs, but they call themselves the OGs and these five new girls that it's like, clearly you're doing this because you feel threatened and you are just a spiteful human. You're an, a mean, nasty person, Anna. And I don't like you. And you're you're not nice. I know. She's got to go. She's, She's got to she go. Too. I, I'm curious what kind of impact Katie has on Matt after she confronts him. Because that's where we left off. The, final, the end of the episode was Katie going to find Matt outside, who was standing outside with literally like five people who just looked like kids who would be hanging outside of 7-Eleven and like the, you know, just in the middle of Pennsylvania. Yeah. I was just like, who is this group? And I think I was talking to Kevin about this, but you're just like never alone as the lead. It must be crazy. Like even in the downtime, you're just like with producers and, and, um, I don't know. I was wondering if he has an earpiece. I don't know if you saw this TikTok going around, but this woman did this TikTok where she had a theory that the leads, like when they're like kind of playing with the roses in their hands and like pausing before, giving them out like it says their name somehow in the roses and I think that they're 
probably have an earpiece. They're telling them the order, which to say the names. Oh, interesting. But I was just kind of curious about producer communications as a result of seeing that shot. It reminded me of the Truman Show where it's like, you're really not supposed to see that, but you do. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. But I hope that Katie talks some sense into him. I I really do. Um, Me too. He seemed a little checked out though, but I mean, I, I guess I don't blame him, you know? Ever, the word on the street is he was very nervous that for this in general. And that's like one of the reasons oh. why he's comes across the way that he does, because he is like a really nice guy who was worried about like how he's going to be perceived and like sure. doing the right thing. This is what everyone's told me, but he was like very that. nervous about how he'd be perceived. I, I just like, I like Matt. I don't know. I just, yeah. I just do. I hope he's happy. I know I, that makes me sad. I mean, and I totally get it because it is a burden, you know, and, and, and honestly, what happened to Katie, too, is a burden because she's the only person sticking up for everyone I know. else. She's actually standing up for every for these other women. It's ridiculous at, at the expense of her relationship with Matt, I think. And it's yeah. it, oh, that's absolutely so messed up. She shouldn't have to carry that. But she does because she's a good person. And it's it's just actually disgusting to see. Like when they were talking on the cocktail par- portion of the the nut date where Anna was like, I'm going to tell all these women that y- you might be an escort to Brittany. <laughs> and literally all like people that I admired and liked up until I guess now, like uh, Abigail didn't say anything. Neither did Maggie. And it's just like, oh, my God. It's, I, I mean, and I told you this, it's like that Martin Luther King Jr. quote. I mean, not to bring that up, but it's like, you know, the silence of your friends. That's it's like, true. You know, it's just like, yeah, that's fucked up. It's no, absolutely. I just, I don't know. Some of these, these women have to go, but I guess that's where the drama is coming from. Because like, for example, I don't even want to talk about the boxing date. Like, yeah, Wells was there. Yeah, there was boxing. <laughs> oh. They had to end it. Serena P had a nice pack, but just like, it Where's was so Serena boring. Who, who cares? I know it was boring and it was just like why uh, they literally just copied the Tasha date. Yeah, literally. It was exactly the same. They straight up copied it, which is just like, okay, I get it. But also like you can't, I mean, like the nut date was stupid, but at least it was original, you know? (laughs) I like you call it the nut date. (laughs) Well, I mean, because it was like they won the nuts, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I know. The squirrel date. I thought we were going to get more Mari than we did. Like she won that. And she was barely on the yeah. episode. I thought we'd get more. I really did. Because they're favoring all these vicious, toxic I women. I know. The only time it's not completely consumed with like negativity is on the one-on-one. So Matt <laughs> must love them. Seriously. He probably really likes them because he doesn't have to deal with his bullshit. Uh, totally. And also because he's chosen good people to be on the one-on-one. So Yeah, he has. Also, he probably didn't like this week's dates because as we know, Matt's, Matt loves to be active and he didn't get to box mm, or participate true. in the squirrel relay. So he probably was really <laughs> bored. He's probably pissed <laughs> off. Yeah, I get that. Also, did you see how Victoria low-key slut-shamed Katie for her vibrator? Yes, she did. D- I know. This, she's and a Katie slut shamer. I, Victoria sucks. There's no she way around it. There's nothing redeeming about person. her. She's like... I, I do not want to have to watch her for much longer. I hope she's not in paradise. Like she doesn't deserve this attention. She clearly is. She's very mean. And even if she's being coerced, she's going along with it. It's like grow a spine. No one's telling you to call someone a hoe. I mean, I really hated when she was calling the other women sluts and sluts, a slur, yes. slut and a whore. And then she also called, I think it was, um, I think she also called Catalina, Catalina the dumbest hoe dumb she's ho- ever met. Yeah. yeah. She it's literally really said wrong. she's the dumbest hoe I've ever met. And and then it's she called okay. Britney slutty for kissing Matt. And it's just like, weren't you just making out with him the other day? Yeah. You hypocrite. Like, oh, my God. And it's just, again, I, I have a problem. And I don't mean to be like, let me get up on my soapbox. But I will say that I have a problem with the fact that I think, you know, I think it's so great that we're getting these conversations about race and diversity. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, what is going on with all this slut shaming? The slut shaming is rough. Also, it does definitely take away from it when it's like bookended by this Victoria nonsense. Like with Ivan, when he was able to bring up how he was affected by the killing of George Floyd. Yeah. It was couched in Ivan having a really fun time with Kate yes. Tasha. They were playing like the floor is lava and eating the ice cream and <laughs> that that, ice cream. Yeah. 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 A giant ice cream, like, truly giant ice cream sundae. Um, this is, was a lot more jarring where it was like Victoria being awful. And then Chelsea telling her story, which was wonderful. And then back to this drama and then in enter the, uh, the like so-called escort. And then we get to hear about Michelle and like, it just is presented in such a 
grosser way that it's harder to celebrate the wins. But that's why I wanted to highlight it up top. Cause like totally. these, the conversations were meaningful and deep and like moreover really important to be a part of like the bachelor. And it's the type of mm-hmm. conversation like that just needs to be more broadly had on network television, especially on a show like this. So it's pretty big bummer that like the surrounding events were not uh, on par with how they couched Ivan's conversation. Totally. And it's just, it's reductive to the entire process and the progression. I think the show has seen within the last, you know, season or two. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it makes me ugh. just, I'm sickened by it. Truly. I'm sickened by it. It's just, I don't want to support all the, the shameful views on sex and, and it's just, it's weird and it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. Whatever. I know we're so we want to be sex positive. Like Katie. God, make her the bachelorette. Honestly, (laughs) she's a wonderful person. It's funny. And this is when I started addressing my own sexism and my own implicit uh, or my own unconscious bias. I was like, I hope Katie finds a great guy in paradise. Whereas I'm like, with the guys that like, I'm like, they cannot go to paradise. They need to be better (laughs) than that. And so I'm just like, what's wrong with me? I, you know, we're, we're all works in progress here. That's all I just wanted to say. No, it's (laughs) true. And that's, you know, and the first step is realizing it. So <laughs> thanks, Amelia. <laughs> I'm serious. And I, I feel the same way, you know, because I I, work on it. I believe it, too. And I just think that, oh, God, just get, I, okay, get rid of also, Victoria. I, just get, get rid, rid of, of her. And also, do you think she is showing? I don't think she's even showing Matt a completely different side. So I don't understand why he I keeps know. her around. Well, he clearly he does not like her. He's really glad when his <laughs> interactions with her end. That's she's clearly kept around by the producers. He's not into her. We know who he's into. That's definitely so not her. Rude by the producers, you know, and they're always like, "Oh, why haven't we won an Emmy?" It's like, "Well, why why do you think?" <laughs> Jeff Probst would never. <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Well, this has been Bachelor Party. Victoria, we hope to never see you again. I'll be back on Thursday as always. Check out Amelia on Ringer Dish on Fridays on Tea Time. And thanks for listening. Talk to you all soon. <laughs> 